Hello, 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 everybody. It is Kathy. Come in, come in, come in, sellers. Today, I am live streaming uh, publicly on my business page. I love to be selling. It'll also be posted other places and in my boot camp, New Year Sales Success Boot Camp for eBay sellers. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is day two of boot camp. And if you haven't joined boot camp, come on in. <laughs> you haven't missed, you've missed workshop one, but it's recorded for you and you can only see it in boot camp and it's only available for a short time. So what I encourage you to do, if you haven't joined yet, and it's super fun, there's over 300 sellers, welcome sellers, um, in New Year's Sales Success Boot Camp. What you're going to want to do is hop over to my website. I love to be selling.com. When you do, you're going to see this banner for New Year Sales Success Boot Camp. It is free. It is my gift to you, to the seller community, my New Year's gift to everybody. And sign up. When you sign up, you're going to get great worksheets. My campers know there's a preparatory worksheet, and we've had one worksheet after workshop one. And any of my campers, if you have not been able to find your worksheets, you too also go to the website and sign up because when you sign up, it triggers an email sequence with the worksheets in it. And camp is on fire. <laughs> you guys are amazing. I am having so much fun reading the comments and looking um, at your takeaways. So I just wanted to share a few. I mean, really, this is such a blessing to me. I so enjoy this. I love giving to sellers. I love listening to eBay, eBay sellers. We all learn together. That's what New Year's Sales Success Boot Camp is about. I love, love, love to share all the information that I have. I've been selling on eBay for over 15 years. I get to work with a lot of eBay teams. I get to present often with eBay teams. I do get to be on um, eBay's podcast, which is a great joy. Um, but what I love, I love sharing, sharing, so that, that I say that one quickly, sharing with sellers and then watching them absorb it. And you know this, I am not a cookie cutter coach. You absorb it. You use what works for you. We're all at different points in our selling. We all have different lifestyles. We live in different parts of the United States and around the world. I have campers from all around the world. So you take and absorb and put into place what is right for you right now. And that's going to be different for everybody. So just to share some of the comments, um, super comments people were sharing. Let me just read a couple here. And then I'm going to get to your questions because that's what today is all about, is answering your wonderful, wonderful questions. So Elizabeth shared uh, her big takeaway from workshop one was to have a main focus for your eBay sales. Yes, because again, I have a focus. I have a target. I know where I'm going. Write it down and then follow through and work on that. You can achieve it. Yes, absolutely. Whatever's on your heart, in your mind, for your selling, you can achieve it. Um, and then Gigi shared, wonderful. I had a lot of fun. Everybody's comments were so great. I'm just grabbing a couple. Thanks so much for doing this, Kathy. You're welcome, Gigi. My number one priority is follow through an organization. Yes, yes, yes. Again, it's great to set the goals. It's great to go, yes, this is what I want. But then how do I get there? What does the follow through look like? What does the organization look like so that I can get from point A to point B? And I talked about that a lot in workshop one. And then I want to share what Melissa says. My top takeaway is your great attitude. Thank you, Melissa, to focus on positives. Yes, yes, yes. Instead of the chicken little distractions. And what she means by that was I've shared, you know, the people that are always the sky is falling, always always something to complain about, always something to whine about. And it doesn't mean that there aren't distractions and it doesn't mean that things don't happen. Um, you know my story. I mean, when I started selling on eBay, you may not know my story. When I started selling on eBay, um, it was caring for my mother who was in very bad health and really declining health, a lot of trips to the hospital, a lot of trips to the doctor. I mean, it was a very serious situation. So for me, it's not that there weren't things going on, but how can I take care of my mom, which is something I wanted, 
and to do my eBay selling. So for me at the beginning, because of what was going on in my life, what I chose, which was to take care of my mom, my eBay needed to be part time. And I do remember at times reading, you know, these sellers that were doing, you know, 50 listings a day and, and maybe shipping 50 packages a day. And I was doing good if I could get up one listing a day and maybe ship a few packages a week. Because again, my focus was on my mom and my eBay was part time. So it's important to know what season you're in, what's working for you right now, if your main focus is a full time job or elder care, or it could be special needs uh, kids, or it could be your own medical situation. You know, I don't want to tie myself up into knots to set a goal that is not appropriate for what's going on in my life. So for me at the beginning was, you know, if I could get up like a couple of listings a week and be on time with my shipping, that was a priority for me at the beginning. It was a win, right? And then after my mom passed, then I decided, okay, now is the time that I want to scale my eBay business. And I took steps to do that. So never condemn where you are. And yes, there are frustrations with selling on eBay. Yes, there's times the site is freezing up. Yes, sometimes your pictures just are not uploading. You know, there's there's a lot of different variables that can go on. But how can, you know, and yes, you know, vent and let things off. But how can I deal with it? How can I be proactive? What is doable? And I talked about that a lot in workshop one, and I'll talk about it a lot in workshop three, which is tomorrow, Wednesday. But today I do want to get right to your question. So let me get there from workshop one. And I'll go through that. I'm also going to read through the thread um, and answer questions. And we're going to do this in 30 minutes or less. Um, so Janice says, I have a lot of projects, listing, photographing, sourcing, social media, et cetera. Good. I have set my number one priority. But are there some, some ideas to stay focused? I see things that need to be organized and I do that. And then I have this to do and maybe I'll only get to one listing. Okay, good. So excellent. So um, you've set your number one priority and then you have a lot of tasks to do with your eBay selling, listing, photographing, sourcing, social media. You don't say what the priority is in this quote, in this part, Janet. So I'm going to guess um, increase sales. Okay. So to increase sales for you, what is part of increasing sales is to be regular on listing, photographing, sourcing, social media. Um, so I see things that need to be organized and do that. And then I have to do this. Yes. Okay. So let's say number one goal is more sales. Then I also want to be more organized and I have the task to get my listings up and to get my sales out is you got to look at your day. So what is your number one priority? Increase sales. What is going to help me with that? Getting the listings up. Look at how many hours do I have in my day to get a, dedicate to eBay. This will vary for everybody and it can vary on the day of the week. So let's say I have four hours and then look at the four hours and dedicate it to what is more important. Okay. And then if you don't know, I've got a little clock on my desk is watch the clock. I want to get this done in this amount of time, this done in this amount of time, this done in this and stop. So again, so I'm going to photograph for this amount of time and then I'm going to stop. Then I'm going to get the listings up for this amount of time and then I'm going to stop. Okay. It's, it's knowing how much time I have segmenting the tasks I want to do in that day. And again, it's your choices. It's what you think is important. It's what you want. And then segmenting your time and sticking to it. Um, what can be hard is for instance, I'm listing or I'm photographing and I've dedicated in my mind, you know, let's say an hour to that. And then all of a sudden it's taking two hours. So watch the clock when that hour's done or 90 minutes or whatever amount of time is stop. Okay. And then Elizabeth asked, do you write down your daily eBay priority? I am thinking of maybe, excuse me, of making a note in my planner and maybe putting it on my computer to help me focus on my priority of listing every day I can. Elizabeth, I think that's great. Like anything, what is going to work for you? If it works for you to write things down, and I do, as I shared Monday, I am the post-it queen, is write it down. I've done things like create um, a, a pretty reminder of what my main focus is on Canva and print it out and hang it over my computer. So whatever works for you. Typically writing things down works because there's a lot of studies about when you write it down, it, it helps your, your mind, your memory 
um, to retain it. So yes, absolutely write it down. And in a way, whether it's your planner or a post-it, that works for you. And if you're writing it down and it's not working for you, like you're putting it in your planner, but it's like, oh, I'm not getting it done. Then is there somewhere else you could write it down that might work better? Because that is sometimes what will happen to us as sellers is we'll try one thing. Um, I'm trying to think of something. You know, I'll we'll try listing. Um, I'm trying to think of something. Oh, photographing. So I'll try a certain photo setup. And I'm having a hard time because I'm not getting enough natural daylight uh, for my photographs. So then I'm like, huh. So then rather than sort of trashing the whole thing is, okay, can I use daylight lamps? Could I get a light set up? Because I'm having a hard time in my setup, in my living room or my bedroom, wherever the photo setup is, to get good quality light. So then rather than sort of rejigger the whole thing is go, well, well, how about bringing more light in? And because I don't have more windows, because I don't have more daylight, um, getting daylight lamps, getting a photo set up where I can do that. Um, Yvonne, I think I do okay with my routine and priorities, but I find listing just gets monotonous. <laughs> I think we could all raise our hands on this one. I have movies uh, or TV shows binging. I switch those up with music. It still gets to be the same old thing day after day. I hear you. So Yvonne, when something becomes tedious, whatever it is, whether it's listing, it could be shipping, it could be sourcing. I mean, sometimes you're like, oh, here I am again. Okay, so whatever task is becoming tedious and for you, it's listing, is break it down. Okay, there's photographing, there's research, then there's the actual listing, okay? Is there one part of that I like better than the other? Like some people, they love to photograph, but they, you know, the research is like, uh, or they love the research. Again, what parts do I really like? Can I highlight those, accentuate those more? And can I, the ones that are more tedious, is there a way to streamline it that it's less? And then the other thing to do is, are there parts of the listing that I can outsource? You know, depending on how much income you have as a seller, it's a, you know, at, at some point, it's always good to look around at your selling and go, is there a way I can get help? Um, you know, you've got to look at your profits, look at how much you're selling and bring someone in to help and let them do the listing. I know one seller, this was a huge, um, huge seller, um, but what she did was, um, so she really liked doing social media and she really liked doing shipping. And what she didn't like was doing research and photographs. So she had someone in her area where she would literally hand off boxes of inventory. And this woman would measure things, um, basically would photograph and measure everything, put it on a spreadsheet and then bring everything back to her. So she was outsourcing her photographing and her research. So think about that. Is there any way you can outsource and then accentuate what you do like and find ways to streamline what you don't like? So Mike was saying, my priority this year is making the leap in international sales. Good for you. He wants to leap and do more international sales as I'm anxious that a lot can go wrong in transit. But I've heard shipping to a U.S. hub that takes care of the international shipping is super easy. Yes. So then, so your goal is international shipping. Yay. Absolutely. One way to do that is to be using eBay's international, eBay international standard delivery and eBay's global shipping program, because then you're only liable to ship to the U S hub. So definitely take a look at that. Look at the differences between the two different systems and see what works best for you. Um, Cynthia said, my goal priority is getting sales with my current inventory. Yes. Very good one, Cynthia. Selling my current inventory will allow me to buy more inventory. Yes. Cause then we get to shop more, right? Um, how do you stay focused during the slow selling months? How can I change things up to bring more awareness to my items during that time? Good, good, good. So goal is sell what I have. So I want to increase my sales, but I want to sell from the inventory that I have on hand. So that's the goal. Selling current inventory, because that's good, because then I'll have the cash to go buy other inventory. How do you stay focused during slow selling months? So if you're finding certain things sell slower at different times of the year, depending on what you pay for your inventory, um, I mean, think retail. 
So if you don't know my background, I have an extensive retail background. So I worked on uh, Macy's and Bloomingdale's and Crate and Barrel. I'm trying to think of all the places, um, Bed Bath & Beyond, but a lot of different retailers in New York City. And this is certainly true of all retailers. So you'll go in, think because we just came off the Christmas holidays. This is a great example. So you go into the store in November, December, and this is what the prices are, okay? And at least in the stores that I see in New York City, um, you will start to see Christmas clearance as early as the first week of December, if not sooner. I mean, sometimes it's like even before Black Friday. I mean, the prices really start to come down and they mark it down, mark it down, mark it down, right? Is if you have inventory and it goes through a slower period, let's say January slower for you or April or May, depending on what you paid for your inventory, and it's going to be different for everybody, but let's say you got your inventory for free or very low price. So yes, it's nice to make these killer margins on the item. So let's say something's like a dollar or less than a dollar or $2. And it typically sells in a normal selling period, you know, for 30, $35. Okay. So you're making a nice, you know, you're making 20, $25 on the item. Can I afford looking at my business to lower my price during the slower season. Okay. So then I'm just going to go and look on eBay. So let's say I'm selling, you know, eBay t-shirts. Let's say they typically sell for 30, $35. And then all of a sudden it slows down. What do they sell for? Maybe they sell for 25 or 20. If I got it for a dollar. Just consider that you could still sell it, make a profit, not as much, and have that income coming in. Now, some sellers are like, no, they don't want to do that. I've got one seller who sells wonderful vintage jewelry and her items are what is called long tail. Long tail means they're going to take a longer period of time to sell. Typically collectibles are long tail. And I mean, true collectibles. <laughs> Cause sometimes people say, oh, it's a collectible. And that's like, well, no, it's not a collectible. Like you can go to Walmart and target and get it. So something that is truly a collectible. Okay. She's willing to wait because she's experienced in her category, vintage jewelry. She knows what the items will sell for if she's willing to wait. She's been selling for a while, so she has a following. So she can afford to wait and sell that item for, let's say, 40 or 50, as opposed to somebody else who wants to sell it faster, and they're going to do it for maybe 20 or 25, okay? It's called the slow, the fast nickel, or the slow dime. And you have to decide what works for you. It can also depend on what you're going through. If there's a bunch of bills, if it's really slow, you paid very little for the inventory, consider that you can mark it down. If you've got an eBay store, you can do things like run a sale. So when things get slow, look at with the margins that you need, with the profits, I don't want anybody not making a profit, can I lower the price for a season, for a time, or am I willing to weather it out and know that typically it picks up, let's say like in the spring. Okay. Let's look at other questions. Hang on. Um, Sandra, I'm a bit of an impatient person and I'm so frustrated selling one or less items each month. I know a lot is due to the fact that I've had illness um, and had some issues with seller standards. Okay, but should I be focusing on perhaps Pinterest or Twitter or Instagram to get traffic? It's hard to be motivated to list when I'm listing, but everything is very, very slow. You're just not getting sales. Okay, good. This is a good one. And, and I appreciate your honesty, Sandra. So when you do um, fall below standard, which can happen, yes, everything does slow down. Okay. Um, a great way to get traffic, and Sandra, it's a good question. A couple of things is, yes, absolutely, social media is worth doing because it brings traffic to your items. Pinterest typically is more long tail. You're typically working more of a season ahead, and Facebook and Twitter will be faster, more immediate inventory. Also, Sandra, very similar um, to the previous thing I was talking about is take a look at your prices again, because you're having a little bit of a slow period because of things going on, a great way to get your seller standard back up is to get sales. I know you know this, and it can be frustrating because sales are so slow, is can you lower your price? 
Okay. So if typically, you know, uh, sellers are getting $40 for the item, can you lower it to 30 or 25 and still make a profit just to get things going, just to get those sales going? Because your priority is I've, I've gone through a rough patch because of things going on. I want to accelerate my sales. And a great way to do that is really look at your pricing because we you want to be irresistible. <laughs> You want to be, you know, and, and just, you want to be irresistible to the shopper, you know, so it's a great, great, great listing. And I know you put up good listings. So just that it's an irresistible price. They're like, oh, everybody else is 40 and Sandra is 25. I've just got to come in and shop with Sandra. So yes, yes, yes. That's a good one. Um, Patty, I have over 600 items in my store and I'd like to know how to get those sales moving. I sell maybe six a week and that is listing at least 20 new items a week. Okay, good. Another good one on sales. And I got to tell you guys, so definitely everybody that's having sluggish sales come Wednesday because we're going to be doing um, listing and inventory. So when sales are slow, so like you're putting the listings up and you're doing your best with optimization um, and things are slow. Number one is just to look at the category. OK, is it selling? doesn't matter if it was selling six months ago or three months ago or four months ago, because we all know this. It's very much like the stock market with prices going up and down. Is it selling now? And again, when you listed it, because um, I'll work with my members on this, um, when you listed it, or perhaps you listed it six months ago or eight months ago or nine months ago, you were competitive. Even in collectibles, you know, you might have the only one, but there might be other ones that are very, very similar. OK, so always go and check the price. And if you're selling collectibles, besides checking on eBay, you do want to check a site like Etsy and just make sure that you're competitive. If you're selling more of a commodity item, things are barcoded. It is a good idea to check sites like Walmart and Amazon and just make sure that you're competitive. OK, so look at that. And the other thing is for people that have a store, look at the promotional tools that you have with an eBay store. OK, you've got promotions manager, so you can offer discounts and you can run a sale event and really look at that because using those tools can really help you to get traffic. And that's what you want because you're doing the listings. You've got the items. Now let's get the traffic to the items and sales and pricing and being competitive um, can really, really help with all of that. Um, so Helen says, I've lost my focus over the holiday. Any tips to get motivated and stay focused? Absolutely. And that can happen. OK, because you've taken a break for the holidays. Um, you might have guests visiting, you know, so you're sort of going, you know, you're getting your sales out, but you're really not actively, you know, listing, doing social media, running promotions. Um, your, your focus is really on your company, your family. Um, it, it could be you're working on a project at work. I'll have sellers come to me. They have wonderful full time jobs and they're working on a very demanding project, but they want to keep their eBay sales going. So if you've sort of taken a break from eBay, you know, it's been going along or you use time away, you know, so you've taken a break and um, you've either blocked your listings or you've made them available, but you're really not actively, you know, doing your eBay. Um, and, and you're just, you know, you're not feeling the eBay. <laughs> I mean, it's like you're really enjoying your family and really enjoying your break or really enjoying working on the other work project. And it's like, oh, how do I get my eBay? How do I sort of get going again? A boot camp like this is perfect. Okay. So go and listen to workshop one, because a lot of it is just about getting energized and focused and, and just sort of revving up um, that eBay joy. And then it's looking at, again, what I talked about in workshop one, why am I selling on eBay? What is it about eBay that I enjoy? Is it income for my family? So then, yay. It's like, yay, I'm paying bills, right? Is I really love um, selling in this category, that, you know, that I'm selling in collectibles or I'm selling crafts or I'm selling wonderful plush. Um, you know, whatever categories that you're selling in, because as sellers, we will, we get wonderful, you know, stories and messages um, from our customers, you know, thanking us for the care that we wrapped things, um, thanking for the item because it was a broken Christmas ornament and you had the replacement of something that they really just love and cherish because it reminds them of their mother or their aunt or their father. So you have all of that. Um, and Helen is, if you're coming from that, you really haven't been doing much at all. And now you need to sort of get back in the swing of things. This is sort of like my, my gym analogy, because I was just at my gym doing some biking, is, if you don't know this, typically people join gyms in January, and I'll see them. They all come flying in in January, and they do these crazy workouts. So they're working out with these super weights and tons of cardio, and they're like pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, and then they're gone. They're gone in like three weeks. Why? 
because it's not sustainable. Whatever they're doing is about their feelings. <laughs> there's no real commitment. There's no real goal and they're gone. So if I'm coming back from a break to go full tilt might be a challenge because I'm basically going from like zero to 60 or zero to 80 in like 24 hours can be rough. So if I'm going from, I've really only been doing one or two listings a week. How about, can I get up one listing a day? Can I do one or two social media posts a day? Set yourself up for a win. You want something that's a little bit of a stretch. And if you've gone from only doing a few listings a week to one or two listings a day, that's a big change. But to think I'm going to go for perhaps one or two listings a week to like 10 listings a day, that might be a little rough. So can I get to like two listings a day, three listings a day? And then maybe later on in the week, I can up it a little bit and then up it a little bit. And Helen, the other thing is whatever part of your eBay gives you the most joy. I talked about joy a lot in workshop one. Can you do that? What is it that's really fun for you with eBay? Is it the taking pictures? Is it optimizing listings? Is it doing a little social media? I know you've been working on your Instagram and your Pinterest. You know, is it that? Then do some of that because that'll sort of get it going, right? It's like warming up. You know, I'm warming up to run. I'm doing my stretches. Is whatever it is that gives you joy. I happen to love packing. <laughs> I love packing those sales. It's like a task. It's done. I can see the items going up. It's something completed. It's something done. Plus it's a sale. It's like, yay. So I love packaging. I love packaging, you know, seeing and my pile of packages going out every day. For me, I love that. That gets me going. So focus on whatever gets you going. Okay. Time for a couple more. Let me just see what's going on here. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, Tomas, can you talk in detail about using eBay as a backup marketplace and use it in conjunction with Amazon FBA? Ah, so for my multi-channel sellers. So Tomas, what you're going to look at is come in and listen on Wednesday where we're going to be doing listings and inventory and also on Saturday. But yes, I have a lot of multi-channel sellers that sell in other places and eBay. So welcome, welcome, welcome. This workshop is eBay specific, so I'm going to be talking just eBay but absolutely come and sell on eBay. I think it's very, very smart. And it's actually a strategy to grow your business, which a lot of people um, have been thinking about, is to sell on more than one channel. But for the sake of this workshop, and because I only have so much time, I am going to be focusing just on eBay. So let me see. When I sell through the global shipping program, eBay defaults the shipping address to the international shipping facility. Yes. Yeah, so when you sell with eBay global shipping, if you're not aware of it, same thing for eBay international standard, it goes to a hub. So you're shipping to the hub and then eBay packages it from there and then they ship to the destination address. So yes, that's, it's a, it's a courier service, I think is the way to phrase it. Um, but when you're using eBay international standard or eBay's global shipping program, you are shipping to a hub. And then from the hub, eBay takes it and then takes it to the destination. Um, and saying, I'm thinking of opening another store, but it'll be a lot more work to better have one, um, have some things I'd like to sell in my second store later. Multiple stores is a great strategy. Um, you can absolutely do that if, if that's what you want to do. If that's your goal. So my number one goal is I want to have multiple stores. Then it's a matter of looking at how do I want the stores to be different? And then how am I going to allot my time um, to be effective in both? But I think that's great. I have two accounts, but only one with a store. I, Allie, I sell my homemade jewelry, art, et cetera. So it stays brand specific. And then my second account is where I sell everything else. Allie, I think that's great. Again, do what works for you. There's people that do multiple stores and there's people that have one store and it's soup to nuts. So you really have to look at what works for you. Do you want to be a soup to nuts seller or do you want to be a more niche specific seller? And again, that would be your number one. Okay. So my top priority is what do I want? Do I want to be a single store or a multiple store? And if for you, you want to be a multiple store then it's really about looking at your time and your inventory and deciding what is best for you. Again, back to the number one, what works for you? What works for your lifestyle? 
what works for your choices. It's, and that's why it can be challenging sometimes because certain people will say, oh, you must do this, you must do that. Okay, so we must follow the eBay selling rules that you definitely want to do. But otherwise, it's are you part time? Are you full time? How much physical space do you have to store inventory? You know, do you want to have a separate place to store your inventory? Like a, um, you could do like a she shed, right? Or put everything in your garage. I have some sellers where they have a whole nother physical, um, you know, they have a warehouse or they have an office. Again, what works for you. If sales are slow, what can I do to accelerate my sales? And with a store, you've got a lot of capabilities. Wednesday. Wednesday is all about eBay listing. eBay listing has changed dramatically in the past couple of years. There's a lot of changes to what works for eBay listings and what will elevate your listings in eBay search. And there's also different things that work depending on what vertical or categories you're in. And we'll talk about that. Also, inventory sourcing, which, again, can be challenging depending on where you are in the United States and the world and how you source. So I'll have ideas for you on that, because no matter how you're sourcing, it is always good to sort of keep an eye out for what you know, you always want to have a backup. You always want to have a backup. You know, like with the computer, I have a laptop, right? Because guess what? Sometimes the computer dies. I have a laptop. Um, I have my main label printer. I've got a backup label printer. It's very, very good to have backups. This is my joy. Welcome, welcome, welcome to New Year Sales Success Boot Camp. Okay. And again, if you're not in it, hop over to my website. I love to be selling.com and please come sign up. It is absolutely free. This is my gift to you. The workshops are recorded. They'll be available in the boot camp to all my boot campers in the pop up group for the boot camp through January 20th. When boot camp is over, you'll have an opportunity to continue to work with me. So don't think like, oh, Kathy, Kathy, I want to keep working with you. You will have an opportunity to keep working with me. And I would love that. But meanwhile, is Take these workshops and use them and use them for you. And not every bit of information is going to be applicable to everybody. I'm going to keep saying this. It is your eBay. It is your business. It is your choices. And to make choices, and I talked about this in workshop one, that are joyful as much as possible. I realize some of you are dealing with very serious situations. It could be medical or family situations, just a lot of stress is to look at what can I focus on that I can control? What can I focus on in my eBay selling that I enjoy, that I love? And for all of us, it's gonna be different parts of our selling, okay? What I love with eBay selling is I love the freedom. I love having my business. The reason that I um, step back from QVC and I step back from professional acting. If you don't know, my background is professional acting and also doing merchandising and displays in retail stores was I wanted something where I was in control of the hours and that it was my business. And that's what I have with eBay. I also love eBay sellers. I love the variety of items that we can sell. I mean, truly, you can sell soup to nuts with eBay. I have sold everything from vintage VHS to wonderful clothing for men, women, and kids to toys to puzzles. I've worked with sellers that sell motorcycle parts. I've sold, I've worked with sellers that are home and garden that are actually selling beautiful plants, crafts. I mean, you name it, you can sell it on eBay eBay is a home to the most wonderful variety of sellers from around the world. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And again, hop to my website if you haven't. So that way you'll get enrolled in the, the boot camp. It's oodles of fun. My campers, keep posting questions. Now, you'll not get a worksheet from today because today was a Q&A. Tomorrow, Wednesday, workshop two, all about inventory and listings and promotions. You're going to love it. It's packed. We start at 2.30. After workshop two, there'll be another worksheet, but welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye everybody.